Noble Halo Fades Rapidly for Climate Change Panel Some two years ago, an international scientific panel seized worldwide attention by reporting that human activity was warming the planet in ways that could greatly disrupt human affairs and nature. The work of the group, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, shared the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize with former Vice President Al Gore. After two decades of delivering climate reports to the world without fanfare, it suddenly had a wide following. But as the panel gears up for its next climate review, many experts and specialists in climate science and policy, both inside and out of the network, a warning that it could quickly lose relevance unless it adjusts its methods and focus. And although the panel, founded in 1988 and operating under the United Nations, has taken or garnered awards and acclaim, there is little evidence that nations are acting on its warnings. Emissions of heat-trapping gases have grown and are still growing rapidly, and talks about a new climate treaty remain largely deadlocked or stalled. In other words, it's about money. The nations of the world, they don't really want to spend the money on real climate change, because the world is in a economic crisis. They could say, well, it might hurt the economy if they taxed, they taxed it, put taxes on carbon use. Like grabbing the, tile, the tail of a tiger, my PCC has gotten the world's attention, but now the challenge is to get the tiger to head in the right direction, said a longtime contributor to panel reports and the chief scientist for the Climate Institute, a non-profit group. For the IPCC, this means providing guidance that will minimize climate impacts and maximize investments in a prosperous and sustainable future. In other words, for the long term, for the future generations, for the kids. Scientists and environmentalists assert that the reports by the panel are watered down by a requirement that sponsoring governments approve its summaries line by line. Some experts worry that the organization charged with assessing fast evolving science or knowledge has failed to keep pace with an explosion of climate research. And at the same time, scientists who question the likelihood of a catastrophic disruption of the Earth's climate accuse the panel of cherry-picking studies and playing down levels of uncertainty about the severity of global warming. Nonetheless, climate change is already happening. It's already here. It's upon us. It's happening worldwide. Yes, the weather is changing. It just feels like the IPCC has gone from being a broker of science to a gatekeeper said one climate scientist at the University of Alabama and a former panel author. Under its charter, the group could not recommend a course of action to cut climate risks. It has laid out specific paths for emissions of greenhouse gases that governments would need to follow to avoid overheating the planet. But Governments need not follow those paths. In other words, they're just recommendations. For example, while the leaders of the group of eight industrial nations pledged last month to try to limit global warming to approximately 2 degrees Fahrenheit beyond the planet's current temperature, 
They failed to embrace the emissions reductions that the panel says would be needed to keep that promise. In other words, just more promises, no real action. Well, that's not going to fix the climate at all. Finding ways to guide nations without being prescriptive is a prime focus as a network of scientists embarks on its fifth assessment of research on climate trends, projections, and policy options. Shying away from discussing possibilities because there is low scientific confidence can imply there is also a low probability they may occur. But that is not necessarily the case, said one scientist or climatologist. More attention will be devoted to research on the potential for dangerous, very dangerous changes in ocean chemistry as the seas of the oceans absorb billions and billions of tons of carbon dioxide. Yes, that will definitely change the chemistry. Another focus will be large-scale artificial methods of countering warming called geoengineering. The panel will also try harder to identify anticipated impacts of climate change on certain regions and options for fostering re resilience in especially vulnerable places like Sub-Saharan Africa. Tens of billions of dollars, if not trillions of dollars in aid, will be needed as explosive population growth and shifting climate patterns make poor nations even more susceptible or vulnerable, according to a variety of studies. Some specialists in climate modeling warn that governments may have overinflated expectations that science can reliably forecast how global, global warming will play out locally. In other words, climate scientists or climate, climate science is not an exact science. Well, not all more in some kind of way. Not everything is known about climate science or global warming, but nonetheless, something's happening to the Earth's weather. Just look around. Other scientists involved in shaping the next report that won't come out for a number of years worry about the runaway growth and peer-reviewed studies of climate change is making a broad, fair assessment of such research impossible. The panel already does occasional special reports, with one coming next year on the potential of renewable energy technologies to cut greenhouse emissions, and another in 2011 on limiting risks from drought and other climate-driven disasters. We've identified the nature of the problem, and social science shows it's of the toughest category. In the end, Perhaps the most vital shift is for the panel to pay more attention to the murkier but most consequential possibilities in a warming or changing world. The panel could do more to distinguish between outcomes from warming that research shows are truly unlikely but could still happen, like a shutdown of Atlantic Ocean currents and those that are possible but uncertain. One example of this kind is the chance that the planet could heat up far more, much more, than climate models project. Another is a possible sustained disintegration of the ice sheets, thereby, therefore, raising ocean levels greatly. And of course, flooding and swamping many coastal cities, causing all kinds of social problems. Anyway, once again, there's something bigger going on here, something more than is known. The more that you see, the more that you know. And the more that you know, the more that you see. Anyway, these are all signs of the end times.
transition days and there are many signs happening daily all around the world. <laughs>